Oh, well, this, this place, I mean, this is rich in history. The building that you see behind me, the VAB, that is the place where the moon rockets were assembled. I mean, where the final assembly of the Saturn Vs that carried Armstrong, Aldrin, and the rest of the Apollo astronauts to the moon. Now, this is the place where if you're going to leave this planet, this is where you do it. launch day. We're flying to Mars this afternoon. <laughs> um, there's our ship. She's ready to go. And uh, about to roll the tower back. You can still just barely see Mars in the sky. This dawn's coming up here. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to behold. The fundamental scientific purpose of the MER mission is to try to determine whether or not Mars was ever a place that had an environment at its surface that was suitable for life. Mars is a place that's dominated now by rocks. And the rocks on Mars are the keys to the history of Mars. They cement in themselves, quite literally, the history of water on Mars. And on Earth, wherever you have water, you seem to have life. So water seems to be a key ingredient for the existence of life. MER stands for Mars Exploration Rover. So these are two identical rovers, six wheels, 400 pounds, that we're sending to Mars to look at the rocks which record the history of Mars. Rovers can be like super geologists. They have supervision, they can see in the infrared, they can see at very high resolution with a micro camera, they can sniff the rocks with spectrometers, and they can grind away the surfaces of rocks to see what's inside. These rovers can actually make some decisions on their own. And if they get into trouble, they ask us for advice. They don't need to take any food with them, or any air, or any water. And furthermore, they don't need to come back. And these are difficulties that make human travel very, very problematic. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, green board, 5, 4, 3, 2, one engine starts. Lift off of the Delta II rocket carrying the search from Earth to planet Mars. We're no-go. They just called no-go. Wind shear. This is what the rocket business is like. we got two weeks. So if we don't get off tonight, then we'll try again tomorrow. We'll keep trying until we fly to Mars. The Spirit Landing Site in Gusev Crater was chosen for several reasons. It's very flat and that's a safe place to land. Secondly, a large canyon goes into Gusev Crater that may have fed water into the crater. And nearby, there's a volcano. So if we had water and we had volcanic activity, which is heat, we had two ingredients that are really important for life. The Opportunity Landing Site was chosen because there's a mineral that was identified from space as probably being the iron oxide gray hematite, which frequently forms in the presence of water. And the water on Earth almost invariably houses life of some kind. And so the mantra is, follow the water. And this is what the rovers are doing. And a pleasant good evening from the flight deck of the Spirit. 
this time, we are roughly 11 minutes, 48 seconds from landing at the Gusev Crater in the southern hemisphere of Mars. Going to Mars is a risky thing. If you look historically at the track record of missions to Mars, two out of every three have failed. Atmospheric entry, Atmospheric in, entry in three, two, one. Vehicles now hit the top of the Mars. It was atmosphere. risky from the start. It was risky when we launched them. Okay, rockets blow up sometimes. Ours didn't. And our vehicles could be perfect. I mean, our landers, our whole entry descent landing system could function flawlessly, exactly as we designed it. And our rover could still die landing night because Mars could do us in. There could be a bad gust of wind at the wrong moment. There could be one sharp pointy rock in just the wrong place. We can't control that. It's the nature of the game. Remember that bouncing and rolling uh, is an event that it could occur for another 10 minutes. The spacecraft has to survive all the bounces or landing be a success. We currently do not have confirmation of signal. It was a glorious moment. It was one of what I hope will be many over the next several weeks. Because we got to do this again in three weeks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mars. Over the last couple weeks, the puzzle pieces have been falling into place, and we have concluded that the rocks here were once soaked in liquid water. We have different pieces of evidence. It's little spherical objects. These are probably what geologists call concretions. Concretions form when there's liquid water inside the rock. Second piece of evidence is some very weird looking holes we think are probably the molds of crystals that were once precipitated from water. The next piece of evidence that we have comes from jarosite. Because it's a sulfate hydrate, this is a mineral that you gotta have water to make it. The purpose of this mission was to go to Mars and see whether or not it once had habitable environments. We believe at this place on Mars, for some period in time, it was a habitable environment. The point is to find these new frontiers, these new worlds, the ones that matter the most in a scientific sense, in a sense that will affect humanity.